Hi, my name is Miss Pat, and those, who, those of you who have been watching our videos know me already. I am a member of the Body of Christ. You met Miss Barbara a couple of weeks ago on a video, and she sends out the birthday cards to all the members of the church. So I am one of the four ladies who make the cards. I made a card for our lesson today, which is about Jesus as the light of the world. Here is a lighthouse. <laughs> it's kind of hard to get this up there where you can see it, okay? Um, that has a really bright light on it for ships to see. It says, he turns my darkness into light. So let's pray for our lesson today, okay? Father, thank you that you sent Jesus into the world to turn our darkness into light. Thank you that he became a man and took our punishment on the cross. Teach us today, dear Lord. Open our hearts to your word. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, you know, we, we do our, our meal here. You know, our dessert is always the Bible verse, and this is our main meal. But today we have an appetizer. <laughs> That's what you eat before your main meal. It is going to get us ready for the main meal. The main meal can sometimes be heavy on our stomach, but this is a light meal. It's actually going to be about light. <laughs> we need light to find our way. If it is dark, I don't know where I am going and neither do ships at sea. The lighthouse helps the captain find the way at night to a safe passage. We need light to find our way. In Genesis we read, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. So let's talk about this. Those were God's first spoken words in the Bible. Hmm. When God created the heavens and the earth, there was darkness, nothing you could see. The Spirit of God, also known as the Holy Spirit, often seen in scriptures as a dove, was hovering over the face of the waters. Helicopters and dragonflies can hover, remain in one place in the air. Perhaps the Holy Spirit was waiting for the spoken word. And God said, let there be light. God's word is powerful and there was light and God separated it from the darkness. You can see a difference. In the beginning of the New Testament, light enters again. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. The Word, who is he? Jesus is God's Word to man. We know that because in verse 14, it says the word became flesh. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem, the light of the world entered. Verses four and five say, in him was life and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. And this is the judgment the light has come into the world, and people loved the darkness rather than the light, because their works were evil. This is what our lesson is going to be about today, darkness and light. The darkness hides sin, but Jesus overcame sin. Jesus is the light that shows us our sin and becomes our safe passage away from the darkness of our sin. What is sin? Sin 
is anything that you think, say, do, or don't do that displeases God. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. That verse comes from Deuteronomy 8.3. The Bible Jesus had when he was on earth was the Old Testament. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands, they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again, it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. That scripture came from Deuteronomy 6.16. 6, Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these I will give you, if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Those verses come from Deuteronomy 6, 13. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and were ministering to him. Wow, we just saw how powerful the word of God is. The darkness of sin and the devil had to leave. Satan wanted Jesus to disobey God the Father, but it's impossible for the Son of God to sin. But he had to endure the test to show that he was exactly who he claimed to be. The light of Jesus shines and the darkness of sin cannot overcome it. It's important to memorize God's word. It will help us overcome sin when we are tempted. Ouch! Ooh! Oh! Oh my goodness! Ah! I think it, it's so dark in here, I can't see where I'm going! Oh my goodness! I think I just stubbed my toe! Oh, probably not my toe, I don't have legs. Maybe my elbow. What, oh, what's this thing growing over here? Oh my goodness! I don't know what it looks like. It's a book. Well, there's light in it. Let me open it up. Let's see. Whoa. It's the Bible. That's right. God's word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Oh, let's see. Look here. John 8, 12. Jesus says that he's the light of the world. And if we follow him, we won't walk in darkness. We'll have the light of life. Well, I want to see where I'm going in life. I'm going to follow Jesus. Amen. Let's see if I can get some light in this room, too. The whole world was lost in the darkness of sin. The light of the world is Jesus. Like sunshine at noonday is glory shone in. The light of the world is Jesus. Come to the light to shining for thee. Sweetly the light has dawned upon me. Once I was blind, but now I can see. The light of the world is Jesus. 
No darkness have we who in Jesus abide. The light of the world is Jesus. We walk in the light when we follow our guide. The light of the world is Jesus. Come to the light, tis shining for thee. Sweetly the light has dawned upon me. Once I was blind, but now I can see. The light of the world is Jesus. You dwellers in darkness with sin blinded eyes, the light of the world is Jesus. Go wash at his bidding and light will arise. The light of the world is Jesus. Come to the light, to shining for thee. Sweetly the light has dawned upon me. Once I was blind, but now I can see. The light of the world is Jesus. Our Bible verse is from John 1, 5. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. I don't really think I need to explain this to you after all of the lesson that we've had. So let's just practice it, okay? John 1, 5. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. John 1, 5. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. John 1, 5. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. John 1, 5. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. I invited Miss Sessa to join me on Zoom because I have some questions for her. She texted me and said she would be here soon. Here she is. Hi, Miss Pat. I'm sorry, I'm not at home. No, I stopped my car along the road and uh, so I could talk to you. I'm kind of at a table here now and as you can see, I, I do have my iPad with me. Well, the reason I asked you to join me is because a couple of my young friends had questions about the lesson, the one about Jesus overcoming temptation, mm -hmm. and they were a little bit shy to ask, so they asked me to be their representative. Okay? Sure. Well, we all heard that Jesus used God's Word out loud to stand against the temptations of the devil. So here's a question from our first young friend. He says, I am tempted to tell lies sometimes. What Bible verse can I use? Um, well, I don't have a, a Bible right now. <laughs> oh, well, I can give you one. Here. Okay, thanks. Thanks. All right. Well, you know, one verse that immediately comes to mind is from the Ten Commandments, and it's, you shall not lie, okay? But there's also another really good verse. I'm going to look it up right now. It's in Ephesians. It seems like I remember Ephesians 4.25. Let me see. Oh, here it is. Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Oh, wow, that's a really good verse. And, and it brings out how we're members of the body of Christ, like we learned a couple weeks ago. Okay, so my second young friend has this question. She's a girl who is being left out of activities with the other girls because she always wants her own way. She manipulates or uses other people so she can get her own way. And now the other girls don't want to be around her. How can she resist wanting her own way? 
Well, that's a difficult thing because we all kind of want our own way, don't we? But mm, let me see. How about this verse? I think it's in Philippians 2, 4. Hold on a second. I will find it for you. Let each of you look not only to his own interest, but also to the interests of others. You're right about that being hard to do. How can they do these things? Well, we can't do them on our own. When we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, His Holy Spirit comes to live inside us. And He reminds us of the Bible verses that we've been learning. And He also gives us the grace to be able to do those things. We can't do it without Jesus. Amen. Wow. All of us need to study our Bibles also and know verses like Jesus did. Thank you, Miss Sessa, for your help today. I think our two young people will be able to see this Zoom very soon, and I'm sure it will help them. Can you give me back the Bible? Sure. Here you go. Here it is. Thanks for letting me use it. You're welcome. Drive safely. Will do. See ya. Jesus is the Son of God. He came from heaven to earth. He lived a perfect life. He died on the cross to pay for our sins. He rose from the dead. He's in heaven now preparing a place for us. Receive this gift by faith. Faith is not just knowing about God in your head. Faith is not just temporary. Faith is trusting in Jesus Christ alone with your whole heart. Does this make sense to you? Hey, we see a lot of pumpkins at this time of the year, don't we? Well, I want to tell you a little story about a pumpkin. The farmer grows pumpkins, right? And one day he decides, I'm going to pick this pumpkin because I want to make something very special out of it. So he cuts a hole in the top of the pumpkin. Yeah! And inside, oh my goodness, Look at all this goo inside the pumpkin. In fact, there was a lot of goo in there. And he had to take it all out. You know, this kind of reminds me, when God calls us, he takes out all that goo, which is like sin in us, right? And then you know what he wants to do? He wants to put his life inside us. And that's exactly what this farmer's going to do with his pumpkin, too. In fact, what he's going to do right now is he's going to pop out and cut out some spots in his pumpkin so it'll look like you can see the light that's inside it. Yeah, so here, let's see. We'll take this piece out. We'll take this piece out over here. Oh, and we'll put a light inside it. Jesus said, I am the light of the world, right? But he also called us to be lights. So he puts his light inside us. Isn't that wonderful? And God doesn't want us to hide our light. He wants our light to shine, that others could see that Jesus is in us by the things we do and the things we say. So let's end with a really good prayer. Okay, fold your hands and close your eyes and let's talk to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your love that you came from heaven to earth to show us the way and that you are the light of the world. But not only are you the light of the world, but you've called us also to be lights in this world that others could see the Jesus that's inside of us by the way we behave, the things we say, the things we do, others can see. Jesus is real. In your precious name we pray. Amen.